Forget the Steel Daytonas because this one might just be my favorite. It costs the same. It costs the same as a Panda Daytona, but it's made out of solid white gold. It's not exactly a secret Daytona, but it's so very low key and it's hardly spoken about. I've only seen one of these and that's the one in this video. So the Steel Daytonas are the pinnacle of Rolex hype undeserved hype. So much so that they've gotten as expensive as solid gold watches. Not just any solid gold watch though, solid gold Daytonas themselves. The main difference between this and a steel Daytona is, well, if you had them both in your hand, you think the steel is a toy and this is the real deal. It, it's really that comically different, even though the steel is not unsubstantial. But it's not just the weight that makes this watch, it's the compactness behind that weight. It's that compact tactility that's kind of unparalleled. At least it seems unparalleled with these dimensions. So this watch is the Rolex Daytona reference 116509 that designates white gold Daytonas pretty much the 09. And this one has the racing dial. It has a slightly more yellowish sheen, of course, because it's white gold, comparing that to the grayish nature of steel Daytonas. Perhaps you can see the difference a little, although the lighting is also yellowish, so it's not actually that yellow in person. It's fairly lustrous and silver. The case diameter is the same 40 millimeters, and so are the other specs. The dimensions are exactly the same, but it wears completely differently. The sheer compact tactility, uh, that's something I've just come up with, doesn't really make that much sense, but for me, it's the best way of describing how it feels. It's really hard to express in words. You really have to hold it and try it on. It is a lot smaller in person, but it's also a lot heavier than you'd expect. But it's still the weight, it's like the weight of an iPhone. Um, you might think an iPhone's not that heavy, but, but if you condense the weight of an iPhone into a watch, it's relatively kind of heavy and substantial on the wrist. The steel Daytona's never felt flimsy at all, but this just has that extra oomph you know, when you when you put it on the wrist and that makes it that much more desirable. So let's talk about the racing dial. The thing that sets this watch apart from the more common configuration of regular non-text based indices on most Daytona models. I can't say that I prefer the racing dial in all Daytonas, but in this circumstance, I really like the aesthetic. The Arabic numerals are a nice distinguishing touch. I think they're super cool especially the way the font is, and it just suits the aesthetic of the rest of the dial, but they've somehow made it work. You wouldn't expect it to work on such a watch. So had the Daytona never come with Arabic numerals, I'm not sure I would have ever suggested putting that on this watch, but they did it and it works. What's interesting to me is that the numerals on the bottom half of the dial are inverted to fit the old school speedometer aesthetic, where the numbers curl around the dial instead of being fit in parallel in the same horizontal plane. So it's uh, so it's comparing old school speedometers or tachometers to modern ones. Uh, that's kind of the difference here. It certainly helps with symmetry, but it's still kind of weird. It just makes the bottom half less useful. So there are many subtle touches on the dial. Each hour digit has a subtle red marker in the chapter ring. Additionally, there's the sharp use of red to highlight each inner ring on the three subdials. All of this is well complemented by the use of the red Daytona lettering that's on all these watches. The Panda configuration has a more sporty feel to it, something that's actually missing on regular steel Daytonas. The whole lineup of watches was intended for racing and timing races with the chronograph. That's really the whole point of this watch, particularly based on its history and even functionality, the chronograph. The screw down pushers make the watch less viable in terms of actual field usage, but to the common person that buys the watch, the added water resistance is much more useful than having instantaneous access to a chronograph. I don't know. I don't know if you use the chronograph in day-to-day -day usage. I like to do that quite often simply because it's fun and it's just fascinating, not for any real purpose. The problem is generally when you want to use a chronograph, the decision is pretty spontaneous. Maybe you want to quickly time something and Pulling out your phone and starting the stopwatch is so much quicker than unscrewing both of the pushes and then remembering to screw them back in because it just feels really weird when they're out. It feels kind of exposed. I really hate that feeling. That's not there with the Speedmaster. The Speedmaster makes it so much more easy and it's so much more likely that you'd use the chronograph on that watch. 
Another thing I like about this watch is how relatively discreet it is. Weirdly, the solid white gold bezel is quite possibly the least ostentatious option and I like that. I really like white gold and platinum mainly because it's kind of stealthy in comparison to yellow or rose gold and nobody would really have a clue what it is. It doesn't really bear the hallmarks of a flashy new Daytona, the steel ones at least, apart from the polished center links and general case design, but it's still less noticeable than a steel Daytona, which is quite surprising. In previous videos on Daytonas and other Rolexes, I've gone over how I really like the Oyster bracelet and how it's fantastic, but I do not appreciate the polished center links. I wish um, there was an option to get this without. I don't know if it would actually fit the aesthetic because even the bezel is kind of shiny, but still, um, it's a bit too much. Now let's talk about why this might just be the best deal out there now. So at around 45, 50,000 US dollars, I think the Panda Daytonas are still between 40 and 45,000 US dollars. So this watch could be had in that similar price range, maybe five, 10, 15% at, at the top end more. And this is so much better value. It's so much more unique. I really like the red accents. I think the dial is a lot cooler because of the racing characteristics. It really fits the, the Daytona aesthetic and the purpose functionality. It's just all in line. It's not just a fancy new watch for someone in some high corporate position to use as a status symbol. This thing is actually, it, it actually makes sense. Now, of course, the, the gold part doesn't make sense with racing at all, but this is never going to be used in that context. And even this, the screw line pushes make sure of that. So at around 45,000, 50,000 US dollars, you'd be hard pressed to find something that represents very similar values to this. Of course, if you want purely horological prowess, you can easily get that at much under this price range. But if you want something that's really fun, kind of simple, and somewhat the gold standard of general watchmaking, then it's, then it's really hard to get something that's better than this. You could go VC, but then you can't get white gold. If you did get white gold, you'd get some more obscure watch that most people don't care about. And you could go for really high hot horology, um, go for something like Lange, but most people don't like Lange and most people want this. So are you gonna lose money on this? No, are you gonna make money on this? Probably a little, but not really. That's, that's not the consideration, but any of those other watches, there's a big chance that it would be really hard to sell if you wanted to, or you'd lose a lot of money uh, when you did that. So at this price category, I don't know if this is a better watch. It's super discreet, has an amazing wrist presence, and I think uh, it's just a no-brainer. If you like this video, you'd probably like the other videos I've got. I've got other Daytona videos, other Rolex videos, you probably like Rolex videos if you're here in the first place. But if you, you're tired of Rolex, I've got plenty of other videos too. Check out the channel and see what you like.